Hi everyone, and welcome to our last screencast on biotechnology. Today we're going to be talking about transgenic plants and bacteria and asking ourselves the questions, do we really want to be messing with our food? So in 2004, and that's a long time ago now, 120 million acres were growing plants with transgenic crops. So I wonder how many million acres are being grown now. What are they growing? They're growing pest resistant plants. They're growing crops that make more nutrients per plant grown. They're making crops that grow faster and don't use very much water, which is helping people third world countries where they don't have much water. They're making crops that make um, that have greater yields. They make more fruit or more vegetables per plant. They're making herbicide resistant plants so you can spray with herbicides and it'll kill the weeds but not the plant. They're making plants with strange colors and virus resistant, fungus resistant, parasite resistant plants. They're making plants that are completely resistant to cold and freezing so this is um, a great advancement for people that live in colder countries like Canada. They're making flowers that smell pretty again because we've modified flowers over the last hundreds of years so not very many of them smell very pretty anymore and of course they're making genetically modified foods like the arctic apple. So here's just some examples of stuff that's being grown. Corn's being grown that's pest resistant, cotton's herbicide resistant, tomatoes are being grown where they don't ripen as fast as they should, um, watermelons are growing smaller watermelons that taste better, um, they're growing sweet peas that have improved sweetness, strawberries that are cold resistant and withstand freezing and thawing. They're making potatoes with more starches in them so they don't absorb as much oil when you fry them. They're making cotton that has a polyester gene added to it which makes it um, a better fiber to work with to make clothes. And they're making bananas with a hepatitis V virus protein added which may help people become immune to hepatitis. So how do you make a plant that's pest resistant? Well what you do is you take a gene from a bacteria called Bacillus thuringiensis and the bacteria has a gene that kills certain parasites like this corn borer and you take that gene and you insert it into a plant when it's at the embryonic level and then when that plant grows into an adult plant it has this gene that makes this chemical that kills pests like this worm so the worm will die if it eats the plants. So here you've got the BT gene being cut out of a bacteria, inserted into another bacteria that has its bad genes removed, and then inserted into a corn embryo. Um, then the corn that grows will be genetically modified corn. And by 1999 we were growing 100 million acres of genetically modified foods in the crops around the world. So the questions are, if you look at corn, what are we using corn for? What are we using BT corn for? A lot of different foods that you eat might have genetically modified corn in them. Here's statistics from 2004. If you look at the different countries, the United States was growing 47.6 million hectares of genetically modified food. Canada, 5.4 million. And there's 17 countries um, by 2004 that have been growing bio-GM crops. If you even look in the Okanagan, um, there's scientists in the Okanagan, the Okanagan Specialty Fruits of Canada, and they've created this genetically modified apple, the Arctic apple, which when you cut it, it doesn't brown. And well, some people are scared of this because they don't want their apples to become genetically modified as well. Uh, they say you can take this non-browning trait and introduce it into any apple variety. Um, and the way they did it is they created apples that don't make very much polyphenol oxidase and that's the chemical that triggers browning. So a lot of orchardists in o the Okanagan are very concerned about this apple being allowed to be grown. It's not been given okay yet. So transgenic plants, one of the main goals was to avoid, help to avoid food shortages. By 2020, we're running out of food in the third world countries. We're throwing away a lot of food in our country. Um, another thing they can do with genetically modified food, besides improving the, the amount of nutrition you get out of wheat and rice, is they can change how much the leaves open 
and so they, it can boost how much CO2 they take in. So more CO2 plants take in, the less CO2 will be in our environment. They're also making a mouse-eared cress, which is a plant that can make plastic in its cells, and they're making plants that can make human hormones in them. And this would be a really cheap way to make hormones for people that so again, to make a transgenic plant, you isolate some DNA, you find a gene that you want the plant to make, you design it by recombining plant genes with this gene you want the plants to make, and you put it into the embryo, the plant grows up, and the plant can create, do something different. So one way they're making recombinant plants is to make tobacco plants that glow in the dark. And they're also making these types of potatoes that are called amphora potatoes, but don't eat it. It's not a real potato anymore. It looks like a potato, smells like a potato, but it's genetically altered. And what it does is it makes a special type of starch that we use to make glossy paper and clothing finishes and cement. Do you see any problems that might arise from doing this? So the normal gene for amylose is turned off in these am amphora potatoes, which is why these potatoes taste terrible. You would not want to eat it. So what are we eating with respect to genetically modified crops? We're eating anything with vegetable oil or canola oil might have GM canola. Anything with glucose, glucose syrup, dextrose, fructose, maltodextrin, modified starch thickener, anything that we get from corn. So we're talking cakes, biscuits, muffins, cereals, muesli bars, sauces, uh, snacks, breck peanut butter, so many different foods. So what are those do you eat? Uh, with respect to cotton, vegetable oil and cottonseed oil that we get from cotton, which we use to make margarine and mayonnaise and snacks and sauces, anything with soy in it. So what are we eating that has already been genetically modified that we're not aware of? And there's a lot of people who want GMOs, genetically modified organisms, labeled in our foods, just like everything else needs to be labeled. And in our country, companies are not expected to label GMO foods on, their, on our labels. In Europe, they are. So do you think we should have labels on all of our foods so we know whether or not it's been genetically modified? Does it matter if it's been genetically modified? What do you think? So the top 10 genetically modified foods right now are things like corn, soy, cottonseed, papaya, rice, canola, potatoes, tomatoes, dairy products, and peas. So all of these foods that are very common in our society. Apples, maybe in the future. So let's take a look at this website. And you'll see here they've got a list of genetically modified grocery. They call them Franken foods. And if we scroll down, I'm just going to scroll down real quick and you can take a look at some of the foods that have genetically modified um, products in them. Lots of baby products, cornbread, pie crust, gingerbread, Bisquick, Duncan Hines, buttermilk pancake mix, lots of pancake mixes, hot roll mix, lots of different breads. Pepperidge Farms, Nabisco, Ego, Trix, lots of different cereals. And this, just, this list just goes on and on and on and on and on and on. I'm not even showing you all of it. But do you think we should be concerned about this? I don't know, all they're doing is changing one gene, usually, to force a plant or a type of food to do something that we want it to. Is this harming anyone? Is it harming you by eating it? What do you think? So more specifically, what are we growing? What are we eating? We're eating herbicide-tolerant cotton, beet, canola, corn, flax, soybeans, insect-protected corn, cotton, potato, tomato, virus-protected papaya, potato, and squash, and of course those tomatoes that don't rot very fast. And some concerns that have been introduced by GM Foods is they're noticing that more people are allergic might introduce a new safety hazard. We don't know what the ecological impact is going to be. B, if we're making all these pest resistant plants, are we going to make more resistant pests? And farmers are really concerned about genes flowing between species and outcrossing to neighborhood crops. Are we going to have any food left that's not genetically modified? So the last topic we'll talk about is transgenic bacteria. So what are we doing to bacteria to force bacteria to do work for us? Well, we're making bacteria that can break things down like oil and filters for pollution. They can clean up toxic dumps. So we're making big messes, so we make bacteria that can clean up our messes.
We also have bacteria that can process minerals, so they can leach um, copper, uranium, and gold from, from rocks that don't have very much of it, so it's a much cheaper way to do that. And we can also, of course, make bacteria that make things for us. They can make drugs for us, like antibodies, vaccines, insulin, which I already told you about. We also use bacteria to make aspartame, which we discovered last class causes cancer. So sometimes we need to question why this is happening, but on, other, on the other hand, there's a lot of good things happening with genetically modified creatures, transgenic creatures. And finally, we'll talk about synthetic biology. This is something brand new that's coming out. And what synthetic biology is, is they're saying, you know, forget genetic engineering. Let's rewire the whole genetic circuitry of a living organism. Uh, let's rearrange genes on a much wider scale so we can make organisms that do completely new things. For example, maybe we can make bacteria that can make cheap petroleum. They can take plant waste and make cheap products that we can use to drive our cars. Maybe we can make whole organisms from scratch. What should we make? What do you think about that? Another thing that's been floated around is maybe we can grow a house. Take a tree like an oak tree and force it to grow in a certain way like grow into floors, grow into a roof, grow into walls. We have a house from a genetically modified tree, a synthetic tree. What else do you think they're going to want to do with this technology? Um, are you sure you understand enough about what you want to do? You don't want to make things worse. Let's look peek into the future. We're probably going to be able to have designer genes make genes do whatever we want. So the question is, should we? Should we be able to determine exactly what we want our children to look like? Talking a little bit about eugenics now, if you've learned at all about Hitler and what his idea about the perfect person was, would you want to make sure that your child had blue eyes? or was tall, or had a certain level of intelligence. Any size sex organs you want. So what will this mean to you and your children in the future? We're going to talk about that tomorrow. And make sure you come with all your hot questions about transgenic plants, genetically modified foods, and genetically modified bacteria.